Okay. So I want to do cool beans. So let's start the show. Um, just a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, first of all, welcome to the um, welcome to the chat about the upcoming tour to Hell and Back, and um, we are going to see what we can do to get rid of this COVID blues that we have at the moment. Um, so the idea is to to have a nice um, shortish tour that is uh, affordable and that we can um, all enjoy and and participate in. Um, Ossie is also just joining. So welcome to Ossie for coming in. Um, so I assume you can see my Google Maps screen uh, at the moment. So let me quickly chat about the reason for the availability of, of a trip like this. Um, if you look at the bottom of, of the South African map and also up to the side, you will notice here from Klein William Frindal area, you come down and it's, there's a few mountains known as the Cedarburg Mountains. Then if you turn the corner down at Sol and Dam, um, you get various different mountains going uh, along the side. But if you look at it from Google Maps end, you will notice that the mountains lie in a certain direction. They turn the corner, they go up, and they, they sort of keep following this idea of lying at the base of South Africa. Now, these mountains are called the Cape Fold Mountains. Now, Cape Fold Mountains comes from 550 million years ago, when from the southern end, we had the push in from Antarctica, and from the western side from South America. And when they um, moved apart, it created a, a sea around the edge. Um, at the bottom here. And then about 260 million years ago, 200 million years ago, they moved in again and they pushed up. And what they did was they folded the seabed around this area. They folded it up and created these mountains. So therefore you can see the mountains all lie in a sort of a line where it was folded from the bottom um, over onto South Africa. And it's called the Cape Fold Mountain Ranges. Um, we have different ranges going through the Swartberg, the Bavians, um, the Cedarberg, all those mountains form part of the Cape Fold Mountains. So when we go down to, and this is very similar to my passes and parks tour, when we go down to the area that we are going to visit, we are going to visit pretty much um, three of the main valleys in the Cape Fold Mountains. So here you can see the Groot Swartberg Nature Reserve and uh, coming down from Beaufort West, we are driving inside one of these um, canyons, inside one of these folds. And then once we've done that, and that is down towards the hell. And then once you've done that, you go over to the Willemore side, and you go through into the Bavianskloof, which is another portion of the Cape Fold Mountains, just a little bit away. And once we are done with that, we cross over to the other side, um, We'd spend a day in Otto and then uh, up into another section, and that's the northern part of, of the Otto Park. And we drive another section over one of these mountains. So we're really going to have a nice interaction with the Cape Fold Mountains. It, it has, uh, because it is there, it has nice um, mountain passes, there's nice valleys to drive through, very nice scenery. And the rock formations that you see is very much the, the Cape Fold. So it's an old seabed that was folded up and uh, created mountains around it. And that is what uh, we are attempted uh, to go and see. So if you, um, if you had a look at my itinerary, you would notice that I'm in Kahalakhadi up until the 4th of uh, July, 4th of August, sorry, 4th of August. And what I thought to do was rather than coming down from Johannesburg or going back to Joburg and up again, um, I'm actually going to go down from Tweerefieren down to Beaufort West. Now, if you wanted to do the, um, the Kachalachari tour, you can't because it is actually full. Um, but I'm going to go straight down. So if you're on the Kachalachari trip with me and you want to just extend your trip with, with a few days, then you can join me to, um, to do this tour itself. So let's go through a few basics of the trip. 
Um, the first thing I want to chat about is the booking procedure. I'm not going to take any deposits from you guys for this trip. Um, the price is very affordable, but what if you want to do the trip, keep the money in your pocket. Once I've confirmed the trip and, and Sandpark says, yes, you are good to go, then you guys are going to pay me for the trip. So I don't want you to, to pay any money. And that's why, Harvey, that's why I haven't sent out any, um, any uh, quotations yet. So you guys are booked on the trip and I'm going to send out the quotations after this meeting. To the guys who asked me for it, I'm going to send it out to you. Please don't pay a deposit. Keep the money ready. And come first week of July, I will then give you the yes or no or middle of July. Um, as soon as we have the go-ahead, I will give you the all clear, pay the money, and we go. So I don't want to sit with your money um, in, my, in my bank account and then it just floats and floats and floats if we have to postpone. What it also does is it gives me the opportunity to postpone the trip quite easily um, because I don't have everybody's money and I have to do credits and refunds and things to, to move it around. So uh, once you're booked, you're booked, keep the money with you. And as soon as I give you the go ahead that we're going, then you can pay the, the amount and off we go. Um, if COVID plays havoc with us and we can't do the trip, then I'm just going to postpone it. So it's not going to cost you any money. You're not going to lose any money. And we're just going to postpone it. If you then at the second date can't make it because of moving down to Plet or something silly like that, then, um, then you just don't join. You didn't pay a deposit. So there's no worries um, in that case. So we're going to try, try and keep it loose so that the arrangement suits everybody. So the departure date is on the 4th of August. Uh, the duration will be for six nights. And it's all, it's all camping. You can bring a small trailer if you want to. Caravan, I would probably not advise because if we go through to the Bedrofontein 4x4 route, um, those mountains are quite steep. And um, I don't want to do caravans over there. We can, we can start damaging vehicles. Have you ever saw with my the passes and parks? Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. Um, so the price is 4,900 per person sharing. Um, if you're a single person coming along, then I'm going to have you, um, just, um, pay a singles fee because I can only take five or six vehicles. I've got my bookings made with sand parks already, uh, Korea national park, um, the, uh, Mount Zebra park and Addo national park has all been booked and paid on my side. So um, that, that has all been done. The distance is about 1,300 kilometers from where we start at the Karua National Park and all the way through to, um, to the Mountain Zebra Park. Children, welcome. Um, we are going to do social distancing and masks and all of the rest uh, just to make sure that we uh, do this whole thing as safely as we can. Uh, so it's on the website at the moment, the prices, uh, all, of, all of the information is up there. And then the itinerary I put up there as well. So let's quickly go through the, go through the trip itself. So we start at uh, Karua National Park, which is just outside of Beaufort West. You can quite easily come down from Joburg. Uh, if I leave at about six in the morning, uh, six, just after six, first light, then I make Beaufort West at about five in the, in the afternoon. Restaurants is not going to be an issue because we probably won't be able to do restaurants in any case. So we check in at Karen National Park and we, um, we spend the night there. Then the next morning we travel down from uh, the Karen National Park down to the uh, Swartberg area and the, um, and the road that acts as the access into the hell um, at Prince Albert. I've already got my booking there in as well space is booked um, so everything is sorted on that side they're quite happy to to have us they had a big fire there in november last year so there's a, a little bit of damage to their camping sites but hot showers and flush toilets are available so there's no issue with that so that is the second night is in the hell um, then the next morning we leave i travel out again and uh, we follow the road over to just south of willem or north of um, of the Spookdorp uh, Uniondale 
uh, onto the gravel road and the entry to um, the Bavianskloof. So the Bavianskloof is over here. Um, we sleep at the entrance of the Bavianskloof on a gravel road. We sleep at the entrance at the campsite. It's the one I normally use, very nice campsite. And then from there we drive inside of the Bavianskloof. We have coffee, we have lunch at the picnic sites. We head up on top of the mountains until we get to the exit of Bavians. And we will sleep at the exit of Bavians as well. That will be our fourth night at the exit of Bavians. Um, from there, it's a good gravel road to get over to Addo. And um, once we get over to Addo National Park, we'll probably be in at Addo at about 10, 11 in the morning. So we'll go for a game drive and have a look around at the, at the game availability in the area and uh, spend the night in Addo National Park at the main campsite at Addo. That has also been booked and paid. So Sandparks have taken my bookings, so we do hope that we can do the trip as it is planned. The next morning, I think the gate uh, at Kirkwood that goes into the northern section of the park, I think it opens at eight o'clock. So we get there at eight o'clock, we pay our money, and we do the uh, Bedrochfontein 4x4 eco route. It is a magnificent eco route. It is probably one of the best experiences that you'll have. Uh, the Brutboma grows four meters high in that area. It's, it's absolutely spectacular. There's a few river crossings with pebbles in it, large rocks, first gear low range, very slowly. It's not difficult, it's flat but bumpy. So um, fairly straightforward. It's not a difficult four by four trip but um, it is um, quite steep and then you have these riverbed crossings. So it's, it's not a difficult thing to do, but it, it requires a low range. Um, otherwise you're gonna lose your teeth. So we cross over the mountain and we end up at the Darlington Dam. At the Darlington Dam, we, um, we leave the park and we move up towards Craddock and we sleep at Mountain Zebra Park for the last night, night number six. Uh, that next morning, uh, from there, I am coming straight back home and um, back to Joburg. So those who want to leave and come up with me, you're welcome to join me. The Cape Tonians, you guys can go back to the Cape. And that is basically the trip itself. Um, it's a fun trip. Uh, there's a nice bit of full by fouring involved. There's absolutely gorgeous um, landscape involved. The time of the trip is one of those that is a nice time because it is at the end of the winter rainfall season, which means it's fairly green. Now, if you ever visit the Eastern Cape, one of the best times to go there is after the winter. So it's a good time to go and visit the Eastern Cape. It's green, um, the, the area will still be green and, and it will look very pretty. So it's not a dry, uh, a dry scene that we will be doing. It will still be fairly cool, so take a blanket, take a jacket, make sure you have a nice warm bed to sleep in at night. Other than that, there's um, absolutely no problem um, to enjoy the trip with me. And that really is it. Uh, I will take, I'm looking for five vehicles, so 10 people plus myself being vehicle number six. I could stretch it to a, an additional vehicle, all depending on, um, how many people want to do it. And I don't want to go bigger than that because it's just going to get a little bit too cramped uh, once we get onto the passes and, and the mountain areas. So you need to, if you want to go, um, you need to just let me know immediately after this meeting or send me a mail or WhatsApp or tell me, and then I can get the quotes out. As I say, please don't pay a deposit. Um, just, just have your, your money ready. So once we get the green light to go, we will go. If my Kahalahari trip up front is cancelled because of COVID and we can't do the Kahalahari trip, then this trip will still happen. It is linked to it. So it falls right behind it. And therefore, we can, um, we can still do this trip. It's a separate trip, but it is linked to Kahalahari if you want to do both of them. <laughs> oh, Gus, I guess I'm regular. So that's it. Um, from my side, there's, there's not much more to say about it. Um, as I said, you can tow, but no caravans. Uh, it's very steep on, on certain of, of those um, inclinations. And um, you're going to work your vehicle a little bit too hard when, when you do that. And um, I think that's it.
So what I'll do is uh, if there's any questions, please ask me and I can answer you. And um, that's it. Instead of doing a video, I thought I would do uh, this. Okay. And uh, then you have a chance of a question as well and we can decide what we want to do. Yes, any questions? Gus, not a question. Uh, Chris, not a question. Just check your inbox. MC has reserved, she says. Okay, cool. 10 seconds ago, but it should be there. <laughs> you, know, you said you already after the Kahalahari trip, you wanted to do the second one that I'm planning. And I was going to do the West Coast. We're just confirming. I'm just cool. scared that Harvey brings in more family and friends and we can't go. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, and yeah, I saw for Harvey and to him. So um, I, I wanted to do the... Doing actually. I wanted to do the Namakwa Land and West Coast section after the Maika Khalakhari trip because I'm also in that area. But we're a little bit too early for the West Coast and the flowers will not quite be out in the beginning of August. We, we like two, three weeks too early. So I, I'm rather going to do another trip... Um, end of August with, um, with the flowers. I've got a three week UK trip coming in, if it's still happening right in the middle of August. And it sort of blocks out my August. So I can't plan anything until that trip has been either canceled or confirmed. Uh, so we're still waiting for the Botswana government to decide what they want to do with us. Um, at this point, it seems that everybody's waiting for the 1st of July and everybody's expecting all governments to do something on the 1st of July. So, we're waiting for another week and we'll probably then know what to do. Um, so, Jan, MC, Akit, Yeled are up. So, that is already three vehicles then um, that is going. Uh, anybody, any questions? Um, anybody wants to do it, don't know about their vehicles? As I said, a 4x4 with low range is, is a requirement. And I have to think in modern terms because modern vehicles don't always have low range, but they do have the capability of going very slow. So when you have boulders this size and your car is shaking and bumping, then it's nice to go very slowly. And also when you have a steep uphill and you go low range second gear just to get out there, it's nice to have the power. So if you have a powerful vehicle and you have automatic, then that's also good enough. Then you don't need a low range. You can get away with uh, just a four-wheel drive vehicle. If you had that in two-wheel drive, then you could do that in two-wheel as well. Mm. Um, Chris, Chris, I think the issue is on our side with Harvey. I think it's not the vehicle which is the issue. I think it's Harvey. So I, I might have to drive probably most <laughs> of the time. Harvey, if, if I remember correctly, Harvey's done this part of this before, so he's had some practice. So he's got no. Ah, uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> Anybody? Any other questions? No, I think. So yes, I've got you guys booked. Um, if anybody else wants to make a booking, just send me a WhatsApp, send me an email. There's still space for two vehicles, four people, and um, we can make the, the decision. I can't stretch it, as I say, I can't stretch it to six vehicles and 12 people, but I wouldn't want to go more than that. Um, it's, it's going to get a little bit too much. 